about that with the camera in the beginning. Welcome everybody to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Um, today, I'm going to be playing around with some pigmented India inks. Earlier today, I um, had the idea of just kind of doing a underpainting with India inks. Um, sorry, yeah, just like a black India Chinese ink. And then I thought, well, maybe I could take a uh, waterproof India ink and use it to tone paper. So, um, I have a few different vials of, or bottles of these Dr. Phil Martins. I think they sell them in various sizes. Um, I, I must have got some of these for 10 years ago for about $3. Some of them, I think, were marked from Hobby Lobby for $6 but you can use the coupon there. And I think you can find them on Blick.com, you can find them on Amazon, just pretty much anywhere. So, let me see if I could show you how they kind of settled though. I have been kind of shaking them up and playing around with them. Yeah, now you can't really see it. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just shake them up, get that unsettled pigment, mixed all throughout, wet this quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua, and kind of just put these washes in, see how it affects the paper, and then maybe even try watercoloring over it. We'll probably have to break this up into quadrants and do an application in each side, but it'll be a fun experiment. This is an iridescent one that you can see how much of that is just kind of settled down there. Okay. So, we'll start things off with the green. And let me get this paper wet. And then we'll go to town. Okay, the paper is nice and saturated. It's gonna buckle a little bit as we go along, but um, let's just jump into it. Let's see. So, we should be pretty good. It is going to um, really diffuse once we get started. So, hopefully it doesn't affect the other pigments as we put them down. You have to be all scientific about it. I drop right out. So this is our green. Definitely not a sap green, probably more of a, what the Viridian. You okay, Hammy? Yeah. Hammy the cat's hanging out with me. off. I wonder if we could mix colors too. I guess we could, yeah. So let's um, let's do a red, a crimson. Oop, that cap feels a little weird. That came off easy. I'll do a crimson and then try to mix the two and see what happens.
Fortunately, you can see I can have a little bit of green on the brush left. It was very Yoda-ish, a little bit of green on the brush left. On the brush, I had a little bit of green left. There we go. Let's grab a little bit more of this crimson. And we'll allow ourselves to mix these two. Let's see what happens. Okay. Very similar to whenever we take um, our quinacridone rose and mix it with the thallo green. I'm just gonna use the paper towel to wipe that out. Okay. Why don't we look at magenta? Get this paper to flatten out. I'll put this magenta right next to uh, the crimson. It's like a hot pink. Let's see. I have the terracotta, which I think that was one of the ones that really had settled out. Definitely not enough. This one has a different texture. It's more goopy. Go brown next to the terracotta. See now, I'm more of like a muted color type person. Um, and I think that this right here would be what I would use if I was to tone the paper, to be honest, or to build up a monochromatic ink painting in something other than black. That was the brown. Here's the black for the Dr. Phil Martins, which probably be exactly the same as the uh, Chinese one that I was using earlier, the Yasutomo. Yeah, see, that's it. exactly the same type deal. I'm gonna put out the blue, and if I can't get the iridescent to mix, I'm not gonna worry about that one.
It's actually nice how faint it is. I did wet the brush right before I dipped it in, but you'd probably be able to achieve a nice tinted blue like the Bockingford paper. And last but not least, let's do this um, vermilion ink. This is like a, the Sumi, I got this off of Amazon. All right, so these are kind of all the um, non fountain pen inks I have. I have some black ones that have silver and I think gold in them. Um, this is just to kind of see what a wash would look like with them. And if watercolor would work over it. So, let me move these guys out the way and we'll grab the watercolor palette and play with that and on top of these. Okay. Okay, so if you're following along, I'm going to use the blow dryer to dry the washes off. So just remove your headphones if you have those on. I don't want to hurt your ears. And here we go. Should be good enough. Let's grab that paper, put this one on the side. And we got our watercolor palette. Let's reconstitute some of these. We'll just see how watercolor plays on top. And I'll mention the colors as I put them on. And like I said, this is kind of just the very early experimental phases of either tinting paper with pigmented India ink or building up a monochromatic painting with the India ink and then um, building on top of that with a watercolor. So what I usually use is raw sienna. Like every painting, if I'm unless I'm doing kind of an exclusive, just two colored painting or wood colored painting, I'll just do a layer of raw sienna on top. Let's see how that looks. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm so much so used to like muted monochromatic stuff 
but some of these, I guess the term would be high key, too high key for me. Okay, so that's a line of raw sienna across them. And this was just that experimenting of just mixing the crimson and um, the green. Now, just looking at it right off the bat, the blue has that kind of ultramarine wash to it, and I think would be good for tinting paper right off the bat. The brown, I expressed liking that as well, and that's something definitely an experiment with building up. Blue monochromatic, I don't think is something that I'll explore, but maybe just tinting with it. and. Um, Ultramarine is something I always use. The terracotta, no, the brown, looks good in and of itself. Could be washed in and let to dry, and that could just be part of the sky, even if it was just used, um, not even all throughout, just kind of in a place. This was the terracotta, which is on the redder side, so it's kind of like the light red oxide from the. Um, watercolor painting. I didn't like the texture of it, so it's just something I probably wouldn't enjoy using. This has that fake green look to it, so it would work with that mix if I was doing a um, phthalo green quinacridone rose watercolor. I could tone, pre-tone the paper with that or build up shapes and then watercolor on top. The crimson shows through, which is interesting. So does the green. It's just they're, they're very, very strong. I wonder a sky effect with that, with a wash of raw sienna over it, would look pretty nice, I think. To get those red sunsets or red um, sunrises. The magenta is even stronger coming through it. But I think that this would be the easier one to work with. The black is just black. I've been experimenting with that. The vermilion I used just because of the extra space and that was from a different brand. I'm not sure about the light fastness of that so I don't want to speculate too much on that one. It's just kind of there for looks. So let's um, wash off this brush. Let's grab another favorite ultramarine. Since I would use that in the sky. Let me um, clean the palette around that. On top of the palette, I have phthalo blue might have run down some so I just wanted to clear that out okay so this is ultramarine blue another common color that people have on their palette yeah so you get that push towards purple here which on my palette I use the light red oxide with the ultramarine to get a receding purple. That might actually give an interesting painting, the uh, terracotta with a limited palette of ultramarine and raw sienna over it. Just pushes it so far to the green over here. And like I said, this blue is just so kind of natural. can't help but think sky when I see these colors. I really think that this would be 
these two guys would really work. Seeing the Ultramarine on top, these are all contenders. There's a, there's a lot of potential here for tinting paper. Wow. This, doing the individual tinting and then painting over those. And then from there, um, doing individual landscapes, it could be months of experimenting if I wanted to go down that path of experimentation. Uh, we'll take burnt umber, just just to see. Wonder why it's resisting right there. Like I said, this had a weird goopy texture, the um, terracotta. But I don't want to chalk it up to that. It could also be uh, oils from your hand that can cause that. Okay, so that was burnt umber, which really isn't any sort of deal breaker with any color or anything like that. Um, not too concerned about a lizard with anything. Let's um, let's try. Raw sienna, uh, burnt sienna. We'll just do burnt sienna, and that'll leave us a little bit of space left to write and title each one of these. This is burnt sienna. So, overall, like I said, just a lot of potential taking place here for um, tinting paper. Just a, a little wash of ink and a dry off with uh, cotton paper, letting it you know, dry flat could really um, change the overall feel. I'm going to do a dry off and then we'll label these. through and label these kind of just talk about them here it is so it's dr. Phil Martin is the um, ink let me see the correct spelling I don't know if it's TN or IN I 
This is the queen. Okay. This was terracotta. Our Bombay blue. Okay. This was our crimson. This was magenta. This was the black. Um, here's an unknown vermilion. Okay, so that was the washes we did underneath. This was a mix of green and crimson. That's definitely something that'll be pursued in darker concentrations. Here is watercolor raw sienna that brand I think it's a da Vinci brand that I use for that one same thing with the ultramarine All the way across. All right, I'm not sure the best way to to mark that. Here we had watercolor burnt umber. Okay, and then last but not least, watercolor burnt sienna. There we go. All right, so we label these ones down here. I am really just liking how that um, crimson came through right there. So I don't want to right over that. So watercolor, raw, sienna. Okay. Watercolor, ultramarine.
that vermilion just really does show through like fire. I really need to find out if that watercolor, um, sorry, that that vermilion um, ink, that sumi ink, you really got to look into that and see if it's um, life fast. I've just never done any long-term life fast tests. This is a burnt umber. I usually look online for stuff that other people have done. I don't know why I wrote in my color, what color? And watercolor. <laughs> this is our burnt sienna. Okay. So close this. the end of the day we just have a lot of potential um, if you watch through all the way uh, let me know what you think let me know if there's any um, suggestions you all have if there's any way you tint your paper um, let me know what you think about that uh, remember here the main goal was to see what watercolor light fast ink how it tints the paper how it looks with, um, sorry, what India ink, Life Fast ink, how it tints the paper, stays um, Life Fast, waterproof, etc., and how it looks with um, watercolor washes on top of it, and to see if it has a potential as a monochromatic, where the brown probably has like a sepia monochromatic buildup to it. I don't think uh, the blue would ever really be worth doing for me, but it would be something you all like. Um, mixing and building up with these two and then going forth with uh, watercolor on top of that, like I'd mentioned. There's just a lot of different potentials there. So I hope you enjoyed, and like I said, if you have any suggestions or feedback, uh, let me know, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.